This is a video showing you how to get started with data analysis using Python. We're going to be downloading some data from the UK government website. It's data on electricity consumption uh, broken down by postcode. And then we're going to be plotting that using Plotly onto a map of the UK. Um, and it's really quite granular data. You'll end up with something that looks like this. I think you'll learn quite a lot with this, so let's get started. Before we do, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, HarperDB. HarperDB makes dealing with databases very simple. So you don't have to worry about designing a schema. You don't have to know the shape of your data or what your data might look like in the future because HarperDB's database will take care of all of that. Essentially, it provides you a database where you can just dump your data and it takes care of everything else. But it also allows you to be able to query that data using SQL. Once that data is in their database, you know it's safe and you know it's going to be handled well. And you can just forget about how it's managed and focus on just analyzing that data. Using Python, it's really easy to connect to. You just install the Python module and in a few lines of code, you've created a database connection and then you've got the data in your app and you can do what you want with it. From my point of view, it was easy as using a CSV file on my computer, but of course it provides all the benefits of that data being in a database. They offer a free tier, which is the one I've been using for the last few weeks. I really would suggest you go and take a look Check it out. The link's in the description and see what you think. We're going to be using a HarperDB database later on in this project. This is a preview of what we're going to be doing. So these blue clusters, uh, and the reason they're clusters is that we don't have uh, information for the whole of the, the UK. Uh, so these are just the areas that we have. These are clusters of addresses, and they're color coded by the amount of uh, power that they consume or the amount of electricity that they consume every year. So when did I find this data? Uh, I went to the uh, UK government website where they have a data section, and this is the data, postcode, uh, postcode level standard electricity 2015, postcodes A to L. So there are two files. We're just using one for this demonstration. So we've got postcode data but we need to map that to the UK geographically. How are we going to do that? Well, I had a search and I found uh, on the Ordnance Survey website, I found data that we need, a data set that will help us to map postcodes to a coordinate system. Now, as it turned out, it wasn't the coordinate system that I wanted because I wanted latitude and longitude, and this is something called Eastings and Northings, but it's a start. So I downloaded that. So if you want to follow along, you should download this uh, and the uh, URLs are in the description uh, and you should also download this here. OK, right, let's get started. You are going to need installed on your computer while well, you're going to need Python because we're doing this in Python. Also, uh, you, it'd be handy if you had Jupyter Notebooks as well so that you can follow along. That's not completely necessary. A, create a folder in a location where you do your projects on your computer and install a virtual environment there. Into that virtual environment, uh, and I've talked about this many times, so you know if you don't know how to do that, look that up. It's quite straightforward. I've even made videos about that. Um, so set up your virtual environment, and then you want to install these packages and modules into your virtual environment. NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, Geopandas, Path. Actually, Path comes with the standard library, so you won't need to install that. And Plotly. So we will go along now. So import all of those. And then here we're using Path just to create a path to uh, the file where we're going to get the data, the geographical data about the UK. Uh, and I like Path. I think it's a, it's a really nice library, this um, Pathlib library. So you should t check that out and explore that a bit. OK, so we've got this path now which is here. Incidentally, although I'm doing this on Windows, uh, I tend to do projects like this on Linux in from within Windows using WSL2, which I would definitely recommend you take a look at uh, as well. Um, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, if you use that, you are able to use Linux on a, on a 
Windows system. And you can even use Docker inside Linux. So it's really good. So I, I definitely take a look at that. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing here for data path. So, so path is for the geographical data of the postcode information and DF, this uh, data path here, is where we're getting the energy consumption data from the, that path. So we're going to read in that detail there, the uh, that file rather, the data, uh, the energy consumption. And let's just take a look at that using DF head. Now, I haven't tidied up this notebook because I wanted you to see uh, well, my process sometimes, and I think it's often the case, when you're exploring the data and you're not quite sure what you're going to do with it, it can be a little bit haphazard. You sort of go down blind alleys and then you you come back and you think, okay, now I'll, I'll redo this, I'll do something else. And so I wanted to get you to get a feel for how you can do a data analysis project. Uh, and this is, you know, a straightforward one. So we have this data now in a data frame. And if you remember, it looks like that data that we saw on the government website. So we can sort of be reassured that we've got what we think we've got. We then read in this uh, data package from the Ordnance Survey. Using GDF Describe, just to get an idea of what our data looks like, you can see we've got 1.7 million records here. Let's have a look at the columns, because often I like to rename the columns of my data frame because I don't like spaces in them. It just makes it more difficult to handle when you're when you're playing around with the with the data. So I have a look at the columns and uh, really I want to change the names just for convenience for the sake of wrangling the data. So I've got this new list here that I'm calling calls and I'm just renaming these columns things that don't have any any spaces in them. Uh, and then I'm setting df.columns equal to calls, which gives us this new index now which has the, the renamed columns. We're going to have a look now um, here with this GB, GPD edit. I'm just taking the postcode and geometry columns from GDF. I, I don't want all of the other information. If I have a look now using info at our energy consumption data, I can see that there are half a million records and we get these column names. So that's looking right. And if I do the same with GPD edit and I have a look at the, uh, the summary there, I can see that we have two columns uh, and 1.7 million entries. So what I want to do now is join our to data frames because I want them all to contain, I want to add the the location information to the energy consumption. So I do a join on um, the the with the GPD edit. So I'm joining uh, the data frame with GPD edit on postcode and have a look at that. I can see that I get quite a lot of these none entries here. I've created a new data frame here uh, using the command above, uh, the code above, and here it is merged.info. So we're going to drop the ones that don't exist uh, where we have none. Uh, you can see here we've got none, so we'll drop those. Okay, so if we look at merge.head now, we have something that's starting to take shape. What we want to do now is pull out uh, this information so that I can change it into uh, the latitude and longitude. So I've created two new columns here, Eastings and Northings, and I've just set them equal to zero, and you can see that there. And then here, I just wanted to play around with how I was going to access the each uh, coordinate here. Here, I am using this lambda row, uh, this lambda function rather, with this apply, so that I can populate the Eastings column. Uh, and I'm doing the same with the northings column. And now if I set the column uh, to these values here, and then we take a look at it, you can see that we now have the data populated in the way that we want. But this is not the data, this is not a coordinate system that Plotly understands. Uh, and so we need to convert it into latitude and longitude. So we do that by using PyProj module, which is a, a projection. So it, it can project from one coordinate system to another. Uh, and this is the code that we use. Now, I took this straight from Stack Overflow, um, but we've created a, uh, a function here that will take Eastings and Northings data and convert it and transform it into uh, longitude and latitude. 
which is what we want. So if we run that now, we get this new data frame, uh, which has the longitude and latitude data, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and now we're going to drop a few columns from this data frame because we don't need the northings and eastings data or the geometry data anymore. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the total consumption because I'm only interested in the summary consumption and we don't need the number of meters. So if we do all of that and reset the index, this is what we end up with. And then we can plot this using Plotly. Uh, and you can see how that's done there. And this now will create the, uh, the visualization that I showed you originally. And the median value uh, in this data set of energy consumption per year is 3,184 kilowatt hours per year. Uh, what about now if you want to look at the top percentile of the of energy consumption well we can do that by using quantile so we will find that the threshold for the top percent is um, 7672 kilowatt hours consumed per year uh, so let's create a new data frame now that consists just of those high uh, consuming households and if we have a look at this data now, we see we're down to 2,735. And of the top percentile, the median consumption of the top percentile um, is 8,823 if you're looking at the median of the medians, and 9,706 if you're looking at the median of the mean consumption. And you would expect the mean values to be higher because they're going to be affected by outliers, whereas the median values won't be. And if we plot this now, this is the plot that we end up with and so this is now a plot of the top one percent uh, consumers of electricity in the areas of the UK that we have and what I want to do now is I want to reset the index of high consumption uh, and drop the original index uh, to end up with something that looks like this. So we've got a, uh, an index here that goes up to 2734. And then I want to rename the index uh, ID. Um, we don't need to worry about that. And then if we take a look at this, uh, we can see that that's our data frame uh, and we're going to save that. Now the reason I've renamed this ID is because we're going to upload this data to a database so that we can use a database to store the data rather than just storing it as a CSV file on our computer. So we'll do that now, high consumption to CSV and this is our CSV file now saved on our system. So now we'll go to our cloud database on Harper DB, and this is really very easy to set up. So I've already created um, a database schema here. So let me just show you how it works. Uh, if I just click on that. Uh, so we've got a schema that we've created. In that schema, we have a table. We could have created more tables, but I only needed one. This is the electricity data frame um, that we created. Well, it's, it's the CSV file. So we have the data frame, we created a CSV file, and then to put this into the database, the cloud database on HarperDB, you can just drag the CSV file here, uh, and it will automatically put that into the database with you and, and you don't have to really do very much other than just give uh, a name for the schema and a name for the table specify the ID here uh, which is why I created that ID in I mean I could have called it anything but we, we need a unique identifier there uh, and then we have this data now in the cloud so it's not on our computer we can share this data and also if this data were being added to we don't have to worry about that pipeline now that data is being handled by HarperDB uh, by our database on HarperDB and we can just concern ourselves with the uh, with the analysis on that data so I've created here another Jupyter notebook and you can see it here and I'll just take you through this now so we import our modules here and then 
Uh, I've pip installed HarperDB, which is the HarperDB module that allows us to interact with the HarperDB uh, database. So that installed, and you can use the exclamation mark to pip install on Jupyter. Uh, so here we import the HarperDB module, and then we just need the URL, which is the URL that is provided for us. It's this URL here. And so that's the URL. And then we connect to the database. It's very straightforward. So uh, I've created the variable called DB for the database. And then it's using the HarperDB module. Uh, we just specify the URL and then the username and password. And just showing you here, we get this DB object. And so now I am collecting the data from the database. Uh, so I've called it raw data. And uh, using SQL, we'll select everything from power.consumption. And now I'm just taking this raw data and putting it in a pandas data frame. I'm returning this data frame that we had before, but this time it's coming from our cloud database. And you can see it has a created time and an update time, but it's coming from a database. And I don't have to worry about that database anymore. Now it's set up. I just know the data's there. And so I can now plot this and we get the same plot as previously, but this data now is being stored in our cloud database, which will scale and take care of itself. It's not something that we have to worry about. We can just concern ourselves with the data analysis.